to allow this to happen would be to ignore the lessons of September the 11th and make it more. Likely that America would suffer another attack like the one we experienced that day a day in. Which 19 armed men with box cutters killed nearly 3,000 people in our on our soil. A day after which in the following of that attack more than 1 million Americans lost work, lost their jobs. The terrorists intend even greater harm to our country. And we have no greater responsibility than to defeat our enemies. Across the world so that they cannot carry out such an attack. As our coalition fights the enemy in Iraq, we've stayed on the offensive on other fronts in the war on terror. Just a few weeks before commencing Operation Iraqi Freedom, U.S. forces captured Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. The mastermind behind the September the 11th terrorist attacks, we got him in Pakistan. About the same time as we launched Operation Iraqi Freedom, coalition forces. Thousands of hundreds of miles away launched an assault on the terrorists in the mountains of southern Afghanistan in an operation called Operation Valiant Strike. Throughout the war on terror, we have brought the enemy we have fought the enemy on every single battlefront. And so long as the terrorist danger remains. The United States of America will continue to fight the enemy wherever it makes its stand. We will stay on the offense. But in the long run, defeating the terrorists requires an alternative to their murderous ideology. And there we have another advantage we've got a singular advantage with our military when it comes to finding the terrorists and bringing them to justice.
and we have another advantage in our strong belief in the transformative power of liberty. So we're helping the people of Iraq establish a democracy in the heart of the Middle East. A free Iraq will fight terrorists instead of harboring them. A free Iraq will be an example for others of the power of liberty to change the societies and to displace despair with hope. By spreading the hope of liberty in the Middle East. We will help free societies take root and when they do, freedom will yield the peace that we all desire. Our troops on the front lines understand what is at stake. They know that the mission in Iraq has been difficult and has been trying. For our nation because they're the ones who've carried most of the burdens. They are all volunteers who have stepped forward to defend America in a time. Of danger and some of them have gone out of their way to return to the fight. One of these brave Americans is a Marine Gunnery Sergeant named William Spanky Gibson. In May of 2006 in Ramadi. A terrorist sniper's bullet ripped through his left knee doctors then amputated his leg. After months of difficult rehabilitation, Spanky was not only walking he was training for triathlons. Last year, at the escape from Alcatraz swim near San Francisco. He met Marine General James Mattis, who asked if there's anything he could do for him. Spanky had just one request, he asked to redeploy to Iraq. Today he's serving in Fallujah the first full leg amputee to return to the front lines. Here's what he says about his decision to return, 
the Iraqis are where we were 232 years ago as a nation. Now they're starting a new nation, and that's one of my big reasons for coming back here. I wanted to tell the people of this country that I'm back to help wherever I can. When Americans like Spanky Gibson serve on our side, the enemy in Iraq doesn't got a chance. We're grateful to all the brave men and women of our military who have served the cause of freedom. You've done the hard work, far from home and from your loved ones. We give thanks for all our military families who love you and have supported you in this mission. We appreciate the fine civilians from many departments who serve alongside you. Many of you served in Iraq and Afghanistan and some have been on these fronts several times. You will never forget the people who fought at your side. You will always remember the comrades who served with you in combat but did not make the journey home. America remembers them as well. More than 4,400 men and women have given their lives in the war on terror. We'll pray for their families. We'll always honor their memory. The best way we can honor them is by making sure that their sacrifice was not in vain. Five years ago tonight. I promised the American people that in the struggle ahead we will accept no outcome but victory. Today, standing before men and women who helped liberate a nation, I reaffirm the commitment. The battle in Iraq is noble, it is necessary. And it is just. And with your courage, the battle in Iraq will end in victory.
God bless.